42 teams showed up to the Albuquerque Speed Bowl for the FARC Albuquerque 200, but only 26 could make the grid. Mike Malone took the Carl's P1 award in time trials in which the 16 fastest cars were locked in. The remaining 10 spots were filled with a heat race. Ashley Tucker in the 64 for M&J Racing won the heat. It was her second consecutive heat race victory, but while I'm sure that feels good, she should probably work on getting into the races through qualifying in the first place. Her younger brother Thomas Tucker will also be in this race, returning to the 99 car for Ashcroft Family Racing. He qualified on the outside of row number three, but if you look on the outside of row four, you see John Burr in that underfunded 54 car qualifying for the race on time very convincingly. And now for the remaining three rows, Billy Ray Smith Thompson outside of row 12 flipped his truck over in a FARC truck race a couple years ago at this very track, went on to win. And starting shotgun on the field, Jason Bates, car 69 for Wild West Racing, got in through the last transfer spot in the heat. And we've got some fast cars that failed to qualify. Chuck Johnson, first spot out of the transfer and the heat race. Tough break for Johnson and the 46 team. The Catherine Azure team plagued by bad luck even before Catherine Azure took over the operations. Zach Gott for Gravity Racing failed to qualify. Kurt Walker, two-time series champion, failed to qualify. Lawrence Burr in the third M&J car. Both Terra International Motorsports cars. The Timmies have not had a whole lot to smile about this year for a team that has been very quick in the past. And now we go trackside at the Albuquerque Speed Bowl for 200 laps. The pace car leaves the field in the hands of Mike Malone making his second start of, this, of the season. And he gets a good jump over Taylor Brillen, catching Brillen sleeping. Taylor Brillen making her first start of the year in that nine car after Leslie Riggs, the promoter here at Albuquerque Speed Bowl, won at Sayre last week, coming back from two laps down. A very tough act to follow, needless to say, but here comes Brillen down to the inside. Mike Malone did not lead that first lap. Brillen just nips him at the line, but Malone is fighting back on that outside. Sarah Wexler making her series debut, follows Malone along the top. The uh, Albuquerque Speed Bowl designed with progressive banking to allow the driver on the outside uh, to, to, to hang in there, but Brillen making a bit of contact with the five, knocks him up out of the way, and Brillen will pull away as we now have three wide for second place. Todd Stater diving to the inside, the points leader makes contact with Sarah Wexler, both cars up into the wall, and here comes the rest of the field, John Burr piles in. Ah, uh, poor John Burr getting taken out early on for the second week in a, in a row. Stater just slides down in front of the 54, nowhere for John Burr to go. Unfortunately, Burr was going backwards after starting eighth. But Team Burr, unfortunately one of those teams that does not need to wreck their car two weeks in a row. Max Chevillin, gas and go for car 51, and Chevillin's going to pull out of the pit lane with the lead. Chevillin back in the 51 car for SWH Racing this week. Taylor Brillen up in smoke after the restart. Motor Assault Racing done for the day after a promising start. Jim Kidd gets up into the wall and he's gonna spin off the front bumper of Joshua Pacer. Monica Rook, second in points coming in to this race. Almost rolls that 22 car over. Caution is out once again. Just a few laps after the restart, but all cars involved are going to continue. After another round of pit stops, Kenny George finds himself in the lead, one of the Daytona winners. Max Chevillin restarted in second. He's now looking to take the lead back. The two rookies up front, but Chevillin hits the wall. No love lost between the Tuckers. Contact between Ashley, Ashley and Thomas. Tucker is gonna put Thomas up into the wall. Monica Rook, another trip into the wall. Not what the 22 team needs. And Thomas Tucker is gonna lose a ton of positions thanks to his sister. <laughs> Uh, racing is a family business, and, well, sibling rivalry is going to come with the territory. Billy Bob Childers has been in and out of the pits. Mike Malone is, gets sick of him getting into the way. And, oof, a big hit from Stanley Parsons in the 427. That's going to take the both of them out. Caution is out once again, just past lap 20. Only a tenth of the way in. We've already had three cautions. After yet another round of pit stops, Lev Azarov finds, finds himself in the lead in the Russo Auto Sport machine. Kenny George and Naomi Alonko right behind him, but Alonko has to pit 
From third, speeding penalty for car 196. You speed in the pits under yellow, that's gonna be a stop and go under green. Billy Ray Smith Thompson gets turned up into the wall and over goes the two with a little help from the 10 of Dan Lecklider. Now here's a familiar spot for Smith Thompson getting his car upside down at Albuquerque, but that's gonna take the Smash Beer Machine out of the race. Now Chevillain is the one who turned Smith Thompson, but trying to recover. Chevillain washes up into Bradley Carlisle, but as he tries to get going again, he gets hit by uh, Thomas Tucker and goes for a couple rolls. Sometimes that's all it takes. J uh, you just get popped in the side and, and over you go. But unlike Billy Ray Smith Thompson, Max Chevillain is going to soldier on after, p after pitting for repairs. Lev Azarov continues to lead after the restart, but he's being hounded by the 78, being driven this week by Jafali Anamiha. Anamiha, that's not a, a name we've seen in this series for a while. I believe he last competed around 2010, 2011 for his own team. Dropped back down to the short track ranks for a while, but he's back with, in, for a few races with Ken Groves. And a big slide for the 78. Going into turn number three, looks like he was gonna try to make a move, but the car stepped out on him. Naomi Alonco contact with Mike Malone results in a big pile up off of turn number two. Todd Stater and Danica Hollifield involved. Todd Stater was looking to squeeze by, but as you're going to see, Stater just catches her with it with his right rear. Jason Bates and Bradley Carlisle also get collected. So already we've had a couple of big accidents. And we're not even at lap 40. This field is uh, getting whittled down very quickly here. Jafali Anamiha now takes over the lead for the restart. Mike Malone restarting in second. And you probably saw Max Chevillain holding up the field in his damaged 51 car. You gotta admire him for uh, continuing after rolling his car over, but the 51 is getting in the way. But as the leaders pull away, you can put a blanket over this group of cars here for about 6th through 12th. Uh, Joshua Pacer leading this group of cars here. Now, uh, looking at Gio Arias in 10th place. Just got past 4 10th by Jim Kidd in the 18. Gio Arias trying to get some momentum going. He failed to qualify for the Smash Beer Get Smash 200 at Daytona. Only finished 15th out of 20 cars at Sayre. Jason Bates on the move after the restart, after getting caught up in that last wreck, getting by Bob Steffens for what would will be the fifth spot. Battle for third between Ashley Tucker and Rebel Denman in the 101 car. That's an interesting shade of green on that 101. It's probably the safest thing I can say about that car, but he does have a decent top five run going, and that's what really counts. Going on board with Mike Malone as he tries to not lose sight of the 78 of Jafali Anamiha. But Mike Malone, even though we're only a quarter of the way through this race, is already faring much better than he did in Daytona, where he pulled into the pits after lap one of his Twin 100 race and never returned to the track, failing to qualify for the Smash Beer 200. But now he's under attack from Jason Bates and Ashley Tucker. So it looks like the handling is starting to go away for car number five. Malone slips back to fourth, but he's trying to fight back against Ashley Tucker while Jason Bates tries to work on getting past the lapped car of Sarah Wexler. There's Malone going around, try, trying to get around back to third, but he gets loose, almost makes contact with the 64, but he's hanging on. Tucker trying to, trying to keep that car stuck to the bottom, but... Mike Malone's gonna clear Ashley Tucker. Lap 84, Jafali Anamiha gives up the lead to kick off green flag pit stops. Get a big lead in that 78 car. Ashley Tucker and Mike Malone follow lap 85. Jason Bates took over the lead for a few laps, but now he's gonna duck into the pits. Coming to lap number 90, you saw Jafali Anamiha right behind the 69 trying to get back around and unlap himself. Kevin Monroe in car 63 follows the 69 in on this lap. Jafali Anamiha gets, gets himself back into the lead after pit stop cycle out. Coming to lap number 95. Ashley Tucker is going to cycle out in second place, but Tucker hits the wall. 
That's not how you're gonna protect second. And you see Sarah Wexler still, still sticking with the leaders. Sarah Wexler making her first start in the series in car number 19 for ninth plan racing. I believe Ramsey Cockiner has a stake with this team, so we'll be seeing him back in the series soon enough. Moving back through the field, Jason Bates in fourth place, getting together with the 51 of Chevillen, continuing to run slowly around the track. Here comes Rebel Denman in fifth place, but the caution is out, and it's for this, Gio Arias doing a couple rolls after contact with the 22 of Monica Rook. That's gonna take Arias and Monica Rook out of the race. Gio Arias had worked his way up to eighth place, and he was looking to have the best run of his young Fark Smash Beer Low Dollar Series campaign, but that's gonna come to an end. Just shy of lap 100, the leaders pitted, but Mike Malone is gonna end up back in the lead after the restart. And quietly making his way back up to second place, Jim Kidd in that damaged 18 car, but he does hold up the field a little bit on that restart, but Mike Malone pinged for speeding under that caution. He's gonna have to come in and serve a stop and go, give up the lead and a spot on the lead lap. So, Heartbreak for Mike Malone after starting on the pole. Jim Kidd's gonna take over the lead, but Mike Malone came out of the pits right in front of him. Jim Kidd had a check up. Here comes Joshua Pacer taking advantage. Leaning on the 18, Joshua Pacer is gonna take over the lead. There's Ashley Tucker out of, out of the pits. Tucker also caught for speeding under that caution. A lot of drivers caught for speeding today. Not sure what's going on there, Rebel Denman. Also caught for speeding. He's gonna drop off the lead lap as well after he had a potential top five run going. So either a lot of guys taking chances uh, uh, with the pit road speed or something, something's going on. But Joshua Pacer pulls away, trying to throw the race away, hitting the wall. <laughs> but he's gonna hang on. Pacer's got a very fast car, it seems, during this run, but He's got to learn to pace himself. It's his name after all. Jim Kidd, despite that slow restart, is hanging on to second place, trying to hold off Jafaliana Miha. Ashley Tucker, again, is a lap down after that speeding penalty. I didn't expect to see Jim Kidd make his way back up to the front after his initial wreck on lap 18, but given time and a lot of other people dropping out in front of him, he has quietly made his way back forward and is sitting in a good position as we're past halfway. Kevin Monroe, car 63, last car in the lead lap in fifth place. So that's what the attrition and that one long green flag run has done to the running order. Five cars on the lead lap. Jim Kidd in second place still has Joshua Pacer in his sights, but Ashley Tucker trying to pick up some momentum, maybe claw her way back onto the lead lap. Not a whole lot of patience shoving Kid into the wall. So that incident earlier with her brother probably wasn't sibling rivalry after all. That's just how Tucker is choosing to drive today. Tucker running in sixth place is the first car one lap down. You just saw Joshua Pacer go by and now it's a much bigger gap. Back to a Jim Kidd, Kevin Monroe riding the wall. Starting to lose the handling on that 63 car maybe. Bob Steffens takes advantage of a big wiggle and checkup by the 78 of Jafali Anamiha. Gets himself into third place, but he's got a cluster of lapped cars to deal with. Lev Azarov and Kenny George. Joshua Pacer kicking off another round of green flag pit stops. Should be the final, final round of stops. Coming to start lap number 145. Jim Kidd staying out, almost gets taken out by Rebel Denman. Jim Kidd certainly doesn't need a lapped car-induced heart attack in addition to trying to work out his pit strategy as he continues to stay out and take laps around the track. Joshua Pacer back out on track is the fastest car now. None of the other leaders have pitted yet, coming to lap 150, so it's been five laps since Joshua Pacer pitted. I'm not sure what these other guys are doing holding off on their pit stops while Pacer is back on the track now and run, turning the fastest laps. Ah, now we have another taker, Bob Steffens. It's the pit lane coming to uh, lap 151. But if these other leaders are counting on 
pitting later and having fresher tires than the 88 for the end of the race, well, they're just not going to have a whole lot of time on such a short track. Jim Kidd finally pits, and Joshua Pacer is going to come back out with a much, much bigger lead. In fact, he's on the verge of putting the other lead lap cars a lap down. 13 seconds is the gap back to second place Bob Steffens. There's Bob Steffens going by. Kevin Monroe third, Jim Kidd fourth, Jafali Anamiha fifth. Battle for second is on between Bob Steffens and Kevin Monroe. A little bit of beating and banging, but Monroe goes right around the outside of Steffens to take over second place. Steffens trying to deal with the lapped car of Todd Stater. Gets himself up into the wall. Jim Kidd slides into Max Chevillen, putting Steffens into the wall once again. And Chevillen spins the 51. Caution is out with just over 30 laps to go. And that 13 second lead that Joshua Pacer had is going to evaporate just like that. Joshua Pacer coming back around to take the caution. Lev Azarov, the 82, is the first car one lap down. Oh man, you gotta feel for Joshua Pacer. He had such a commanding lead. And then those dreaded words came over his radio. Caution is out. The leaders now have about 20 laps give or take a few on those tires and we're gonna see another round of pit stops so the five lead lap cars are going to be on equal footing after that uh that questionable pit strategy at about the three quarters mark joshua pacer continues to hold the lead kevin monroe second bob stephens third jafali anamiha fourth and then jim kidd is the last car on the lead lap lev azarov first car off the lead lap in sixth place fighting to get his way to make his way back onto the lead, lead lap he gets a bit of a push from sarah wexler but that could end up helping azarov as azarov slides in front of the 88 getting himself onto the tail end of the lead lap monroe hounding the back of the 88 now but jim kidd got caught for speeding on under that caution stop and go for car number 18 and a huge heartbreak for jim kidd Practically guaranteed a top five. Now caught for speeding. He's off the lead lap now. And he's going to have to try to salvage uh, a halfway decent finish. But Monroe also caught for speeding and makes contact with his teammate, the 64 of Ashley Tucker, coming out of the pits. So uh, disaster, disaster for M&J Racing almost turns into a bigger disaster. A frustrated Kevin Monroe not paying a whole lot of attention out of the pits almost wrecks his teammate. In the meantime, Lev Azarov desperately trying to hold off Joshua Pacer. Pacer trying to put Azarov back a lap down, trying to cut down his competition as much as possible. Slide job from Pacer, but Azarov hanging on around the outside. Pacer is committed to the bottom. Azarov trying to make the outside work. Again, progressive banking here at the Albuquerque Speed Bowl that allows us to see battles like this. And the outside, it looks like it's going to pay off for Lev Azarov as he gets back around the 88, puts himself back onto the lead lap. Now Jafaliana Mihop hits, but not for speeding. The 78 hit the wall, and he got a severe tire rub on the right side. So the Ken Groves team pits, uh, pits Anamiha to get that damage fixed rather than risk that tire blowing and getting into a wreck. Less than 10 laps to go. Lev Azarov has pulled away from Joshua Pacer. Pacer now dialing back a bit. He's got a very big lead over Bob Steffens in second place. So now he's just trying to preserve the 88 and bring it home. But Steffens trying to hang on to the seven. He's lost the handling on that car while trying to contend with all these lapped cars. Lev Azarov is one of the fastest cars on the track now. He's been trying to catch the seven, but it looks like it's gonna be too little too late. In the meantime, Joshua Pacer takes the white flag. The Jones Sport team has been competing in the series on and off the past couple years, and Pacer is gonna bring home their first Fark Smash Beer Low Dollar Series victory. Joshua Pacer goes to the winner's circle and earns himself a Farkoff spot.
Bob Steffens and Lev Azarov were, were the only other two cars to finish on the lead lap. Kenny George, the rookie, sneaks into fourth place thanks to some of the attrition and the penalties that took place. Mike Malone fights back from his penalty to fifth place after starting on the pole. Jim Kidd, Ashley Tucker, Rebel Denman, Sarah Wexler in her first start, and Jafaliana Mihai's first start in a long time, also overcoming adversity to snag themselves top 10 finishes. Bradley Carlisle finishes 11th after being caught up in a couple accidents. Todd Stater, points leader coming into this race, 12th place. Kevin Monroe knocked back to 13th after his late race penalty. And Max Chevillan, after flipping his car over, comes home in 14th place the last car to finish the race. And he uh, gets a couple bonus points for leading a lap for his troubles. Now let's have a look at the point standings, leaving Albuquerque. Todd Stater still on top. Kenny George takes over second spot from Monica Rook. Stanley Parsons maintaining fourth place despite failing to finish. Monroe and Tucker, the M&J drivers, fifth and sixth. Lev Azarov and Bob Steffens' top five finishes translate to seventh and eighth for them, respectively. Jason Bates and Dan Lecklater round out the top ten. Leslie Riggs still 11th after her win at Sayre Speedway, but as far as we know, that was the last race that she'll be running this year. She will not be coming back to contest the Fark off despite getting a race win. The Pearson Sweeney cars, Billy Ray Smith Thompson and Bradley Carlisle, 12th and 13th. Max Cheville and the rookie for SWH Racing, still 14th in the standings. Tie for 15th between Rebel Denman and Thomas Tucker. Danica Hollifield, the other SWH car, 17th. There's a tie for 18th between Richard Scott and Jim Kidd. Richard Scott, same situation as Leslie Riggs. After his race win, we don't believe he'll be coming back, but Richard Scott is is more so up in the air than Leslie Riggs. And finally, Joshua Pacer, after his victory today, breaks into the top 20. The next stop for the FARC Smash Beer Low Dollar Series will be the Elko Speedway in Minnesota, the 3 8 mile oval for the Minnesota Auto Sales 200. And we will bring you all of the highlights right here on the FARC Racing Network.